Hey guys, this is Dr. Sangeet and welcome back to another lecture of Dental Patshala where we help you understand and learn dentistry better and easy way and today's topic we are going to talk about the diseases of salivary gland. So without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back to another lecture of 10 in 10 series where we cover each topic under 10 headings in 10 minutes and today's topic is the Warthin's tumors or the adenolymphoma or another name is cyst adenoma lymphadenomatosum papilliferum. So adenolymphoma or Warthin tumor as the name suggests it is given by the pathologist Alfred Scott Warthin who did two cases. Uh, in 1929 and hence the name Vathin's tumor. Before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you don't miss any of our future videos. As the name suggests Oma, that means that it is going to be a benign tumor. So, uh, adenolymphoma or cyst adenoma, lymph adenomatosum, papilliferum is a benign cystic tumor of the salivary gland. Now we have to break the name and it contains lymphocytes, lymphoma. So it contains the lymphocyte and lymph node like the stroma in the connective tissue. So we will get the lymphoid aggregates in the connective tissue in lympho adenolymphoma. So this adenolymphoma is the second most common benign salivary gland neoplasm after the pleomorphic adenoma as we know that pleomorphic adenoma which we have covered in the previous video is the most common benign salivary neoplasm. So it, the, the pleomorphic adenoma is the most common salivary gland cancer, benign cancer right and this adenolymphoma or cyst adenoma lymph lymphomatosum papilliferum is the common tumor of parotid gland so most commonly most commonly almost always i must say it is seen in the parotid gland so it most commonly involves most of the time it involves the parotid gland tumor most commonly seen in the male smokers above 40 years of age so what is it what do we see in lymphoadenomatosum it arises from the incorporation of the lymphoid tissue in the parotid gland as we know that the most common involvement is the parotid gland so it is arising from the incorporation of lymphoid tissue see as the name suggests this is cyst, adenoma, cyst adenoma so that means there is going to be cystic involvement so the incorporation of lymphoid tissue in the parotid gland and what happens or induction of cystic or oncocystic changes so there are going to be some cystic changes as well as some neoplastic and cystic changes so both it is going to be cyst adenoma as the name suggests there are going to be cystic changes as well as oma so there are going to be benign changes so benign tumor changes so both the changes we can see in the inflammatory uh, in the connective tissue in that we are going to see the lymphocytes in that we are going to see the inflammatory infiltrate as the name suggests lymphomatosum so we will see the lymphocytes in the connective tissue matrix in the connective tissue stroma so this is about the adenolymphoma that it is going to there is going to be the lymphoid tissue will which will invade in the parotid gland most commonly the parotid gland so this is a tumor of the parotid gland with double layer of epithelium resting on the dense lymphoid stroma so in the connective tissue we will see see as the name suggests you don't have to uh, memorize it as it is you have to break the name and adenolymphoma as the name suggests there is going to be lymphocytes in the connective tissue that is for sure the second thing which you have to remember in the histopathologic section is that there is going to be double layer epithelium so if you can see this red line uh, both the sides there is going to be the epithelial cells right so in between we have got the cystic space in the connective tissue we have the lymphocytes so if you can see these lymphocytes are aggregates there is a lymphoid aggregate which is seen in the connective tissue stroma as you can see in a wall like in a uh, circular manner and if you look at the epithelium uh, of the cystic lining see this is the cystic wall cystic space which contains the eosinophilic coagulum and if you look at the epithelium lining we have got double layer so both the sides there are epithelial cells and if you look at towards the cystic line there is palisading nucleus so the nucleus is away from the basement membrane so this is towards the 
cystic space as you can see there is a palisading nucleus which is present in the histopathological section so if we describe the adenolymphoma or the warthen's tumor this is a tumor of the parotid gland with a double layer of epithelial cells which is resting on the dense lymphoid stroma which is resting on the lymphoid connective tissue stroma so if you look at the clinically there is going to be slow enlargement well circumscribed painless swelling now that it involves mostly the parotid gland so there is going to be a movable swelling as also similar like a pleomorphic adenoma we have studied in the pleomorphic adenoma that it is a movable swelling see all of the salivary gland tumors there will be a movable swelling except the cylindroma right so that is all around different because that is a painful also that there is going to be perineural transmission so that is fixed other than that all the salivary gland tumors major salivary gland tumors they are movable so this is adenolymphoma is also movable uh, and because we are talking about the parotid gland most commonly involved parotid gland so there is going to be the swelling in the angle of the, at the angle of the mandible so we will see this movable swelling in the superficial lobe of the parotid gland and it can even grow up to 2 to 4 cm in diameter and if we are going to palpate it if you are going to palpate it you will feel this compressible and a duffy feeling on palpation so you will feel like this is a dough like that uh, it will compress so if you put your finger you if you palpate it it the swelling is going to be compressible swelling and if you take the cross section the exudate will come out either the watery or there is going to be a chocolate color fluid which will come out because see we have got a lymphocytes aggregates in the connective tissue stroma there is going to be multi cystic spaces and the lymphoid tissue if we cut it histopathology and scintigram it will show the hot spot or the hot nodules in the scintigram so if we to, if we take the histological cross section we will see there is going to be a papillary projection of the double layer epithelium so both the sides there will be epithelial cells and we will see a peripheral cell with a palisading nucleus in between in the in between both the layers we will have a cystic space right this cystic space will contain the eosinophilic coagulum and in the connective tissue there are lymphocytes aggregate in the connective tissue stroma as the name suggests adenolymphoma or cyst adenoma so cyst adenoma lymphomatosum so there is going to be the lymphocyte and lymph node like stroma in the connective tissue we will see that lymph node like stroma will be there like as it is present in the lymph nodes lot of lymphocytes present in the aggregates so there is going to be lymphoid aggregates and the connective tissue of the adenolymphoma see as the name suggests adenolymphoma so there is going to be lymphocytes that is the uh, important thing which you have to remember and second important thing which you have to remember is that it almost always involve the parotid gland right oma word that means it is a benign tumor you don't have to remember this then how how are we going to treat it we are going to do the surgical enucleation for adenolymphoma so adenolymphoma also known as aka warthen's tumor because it was first the pathological section was taken first by the alfred scott warthen that's how that's how the name warthen's tumor adenolymphoma cysto adenoma lymphomatosum papilliferum so that means there is going to be cyst as well as the benign tumor so there is going to be incorporation of lymphoid tissue because it almost always involve the parotid gland so there is going to be the lymphoid tissue in the parotid gland or induction of cystic or oncocystic changes by the inflammatory cells by the lymphocytes in the connective tissue stroma so this is a parotid tumor gland with double layer of epithelial cells resting on the dense lymphoid stroma So guys this is about adenolymphoma or Warthen's tumor I hope that you have enjoyed the video so if you have enjoyed the video then give it a thumbs up also you can comment in the comment section below and there is a link in the description box below to support me on Patreon as well as on PayPal to make free videos for you guys and to make free notes so guys till then keep reading keep learning stay motivated i will see you soon in the next video